having a knee swell up on you can mean anything from you overdid it to a serious infection and of course an autoimmune disease. But how can you tell if your knee swelling just needs ice or a specialist? We can have a tendency to either think a swollen knee is nothing or think it's something horrible. We want it to go away quickly and when it doesn't, we worry there's something very wrong with us. Trust me, I know. I know the mental gymnastics will do denying the fact that our knee is the size of a grapefruit as we hobble away. We're gonna get into the five most common reasons your knee can be swollen and what you can do about it. So stick around. So the five reasons your knee may be swollen are injury, infection, crystal deposition disease, autoimmunity, or swelling of the surrounding structures. So let's break each one of those down. So the first is injury. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? And to a certain extent it is. But it's important to note that injury isn't always the blunt, acute injury that first comes to mind. When I said injury, you immediately thought of falling, getting hit, or twisting your knee, right? And sure, those things can certainly do a number on your knee and cause it to get swollen. Those types of injuries we call acute injuries, and the pain and swelling from those can be immediate. These are the types of injuries that stop you in your tracks. After an acute injury, the knee swelling can be accompanied by bruising or even bleeding in the knee joint. Knee swelling from an injury usually means there's been structural damage to a key component of the knee, like the bone, tendon, or ligament. And although taking a direct hit to the knee can certainly do that, you can also have overuse injuries. Overuse injuries don't tend to be as dramatic, but they can lead to knee swelling nonetheless. These are going to be injuries from repetitive motion and usually don't stop you in your tracks, but can creep up on you and eventually slow you down. This is where I would categorize the swelling we call osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a wear and tear degenerative arthritis we can get really in any joint. It can lead to limited mobility, joint pain and swelling, and eventually muscle weakness. I've done a few videos on osteoarthritis and we'll link those in the description box below. When we have a joint that has some abnormal anatomy from osteoarthritis, that joint can be more prone to overuse injuries and lead to knee swelling. In fact, just walking on a knee with osteoarthritis can lead to overuse and then swelling. Infection. So infection is a biggie, not because it's the most common, but because it's the one that you don't want to mess around with. Okay, let's be honest, you don't really want to mess around with any of these, but having a bacterial infection inside your knee joint is no joke. An untreated knee joint infection can eat away at the structures of your knee, leaving you needing a joint replacement more. Do you mean more? And it can happen fast. If you go in to see your doctor with a swollen knee that is also red and warm to the touch and you haven't had any obvious injury, then your doc is going to want to do everything they can to rule out infection because that's the thing that will do the damage to your knee the fastest. So what are the things we do to diagnose a knee infection? Yes, there are blood tests and maybe even x-rays and MRIs will be done looking for signs of inflammation. But the real answer will come from a procedure called an arthrocentesis or a joint tap. This is where the doc will insert a needle into the joint and take out some fluid. That fluid is then sent to the lab to be tested for inflammation or infection. This procedure can be done with or without the use of an ultrasound machine. And although it may not sound super fun, it is really the only way to tell if there's an infection in the joint. If there is an infection in the joint, then you will leave the hands of your primary care doctor or your rheumatologist and be urgently given over to an orthopedic surgeon who will decide what the next steps are. There is another way infections can lead to knee swelling. Up until now, we've been talking about a direct bacterial infection inside the knee. Sometimes we can get systemic infections like the flu or other viruses like COVID or even stomach bugs. And part of our body's reaction to that infection is to get knee swelling. This is called reactive arthritis. It can last weeks after the initial infection's over, but thankfully most of the time it will resolve. Gout and CPPD are conditions marked by periodic joint swelling. These conditions develop when certain crystals deposit in our joint. When triggered, then they can cause intense joint inflammation. These flares are usually self-limited and can last days to weeks, but they're also very debilitating and oftentimes require anti-inflammatory medications. I have a whole video on gout that I'll link down below. Classically, we think of gout as affecting the first big toe, but it can certainly happen in any joint, including the knee. The best way to tell if someone's knee swelling is from gout is to do a joint tap. This serves two purposes. One, it rules out an infection 
because remember, if you walk through the door with a swollen knee that's warm and red and you haven't been hit by a linebacker, then infection's gonna be my number one worry. And two, the lab can look at the fluid and tell us that they see crystals. Another reason, and quite honestly, the most common reason people come to see me, a rheumatologist, is the presence of an autoimmune condition. Although knee swelling is more commonly seen in conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and even lupus, it can really happen in any autoimmune or rheumatic condition. Joint pain and joint swelling is a common thread amongst all the conditions I care for. So when I see any new patient with knee swelling, I am thinking very broadly while I ask my questions and do my testing in order to narrow down my thinking. The knee swelling that happens with autoimmune conditions does not happen in isolation, however. There will be other symptoms. There may be more than one joint swollen, or there might be fevers, rashes, fatigue, hair loss, or mouth ulcers. It's very, very rare for someone to walk in with just one knee swollen and then have an autoimmune condition. Usually there's other things going on. And finally, we have swelling of the surrounding tissue. This is not something many people consider, but the knee is actually made up of many different structures. We have tendons and ligaments and nearby bursa, all of which get inflamed. When these structures get inflamed, it can look and feel like the knee is swollen, but on closer inspection, you can feel or see on an MRI that the knee is fine, but these other structures are swollen. So why may this happen? Well, overuse is the most common culprit, although in some cases, autoimmunity may be the reason. And we can't forget water retention and swelling of the leg. It can sometimes be confusing to tell if a joint is swollen from inflammation or any other reasons I've talked about, or it's just water retention of the legs. This is actually more of a problem in the ankles, but I've seen it cause confusion with the knee as well. When the leg is swollen from water retention, you can have joint pain and tightness and a limited range of motion, leading you to think there's something wrong with the knee. But you can do a simple thumbprint test to see if you are retaining any water. This may be from genetics, heart, liver, or kidney issues, or from carrying excessive weight. So I love giving you some things to think about. So what should you think about and ask if you find yourself with a swollen knee? What were you doing immediately before or during the time your knee got swollen? Is there an activity you can point to that caused an injury? Did you hear a sudden sound or pop? Did your pain hit you all at once and stop you in your tracks? Or did it creep up on you? These questions will help your doctor narrow down their thinking and judge how aggressive to be when looking for things like an infection and starting treatment. Do you have any other symptoms going on? Are you having fevers, night sweats, decreased appetite or fatigue? Are any other joints swollen or hurting? Has anyone else in your family ever had an autoimmune condition or arthritis? These are all key things to think about when preparing to go in and see your doc. Regardless of how active you are, having a swollen knee that hurts and limits you is a giant bummer. Believe me, I know. Treatment and rehab for a swollen knee can take a long time before even getting to that point. We need to know first why it happened in the first place. I hope this has helped you understand your doctor's thought process and the questions you should think about as you and your doc figure out why your knee is swollen. And I'll see you next time.